this episode, Russell Kibbe, Building Small Businesses in the United States from Australia. Well, hello, everybody. And how's your day going for you? Well, it's going good here, at least. Thank you, God. I have Russell Kibbe on the Zoom today. And Russell Kibbe is not normal. No, he's not. No. Hello, Russell. Hi. Greetings. Salutations. Well, I tell you, you're doing so much. No human being can do as much as you've done so far with your life. I mean, I'm impressed, and I know you. I know you. I know your mother. Uh huh. <laughs> Russell what? comes from the Carney family, and I'm a Carney, you see. So, uh, this is so interesting because I didn't realize that you went, you know, I forgot you were drugged in Spain, and that was my first. I, I forgot all about that. I mean, that's a terrible feeling. <laughs> I'm sorry? That's a terrible feeling. You should go to Madrid and be drugged there. <laughs> I, I didn't have that experience, fortunately, but you no. did. Hey, yeah. I went back. I went back, though. So, yeah. and, and everything was fine. And that's kind yeah. of the overlying uh, the theme here is, is uh, be positive. Look that's right. Front side. As I get older in life, I realize how much, how important to, uh, positivity and optimism is and looking at being a half glass full kind of person. It's, it's I, one of the most overriding things that I've discovered looking back on life. Well, you know, when I talked with you yesterday or the day before, I mentioned something and you said, it's a great day here. He lives in California, by the way, and he and his daughter just got over COVID, right? Yes. I mean, and there are people that are watching the show that have COVID, but yeah. you got over it. See, that's the positive side of it. You Did you have a hard time? Uh, it wasn't terrible. It was a bad cold. Um, really? I, I lost my taste, uh, sense of taste, and uh, my daughter still hasn't got her, got her smell back. And that was over Thanksgiving, so we're looking at almost... <laughs> Two months. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so it, grateful because, yeah. um, well, one, because I, I mm -hmm. care. But also, mm -hmm. we have some people that are really, really uh, not coming back well and others that feel better than ever before. So who knows what? We didn't know that we were going to get hit with this. And I guess our great grandmother's grandmother's grandmothers didn't know they were going to get hit with what typhoid fever uh, i don't know if it was the indians or the nazis or you know but here we are for such a time as this and we're right here and what you're doing is i was trying to build them up to let them know what you're doing now how how proud i am of you and that's why i say it's not normal because if all the americans do what you're doing boy we wouldn't have any wars we wouldn't be having any trouble you know uh, right I remember when you're in New York at Gold, Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, you were there two years, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that gave you a lot of training. Yes. Yeah. You did. You got me, uh, introduced me to some very important people and uh, had a wonderful time and uh, still won't ever forget uh, that dinner at uh, that restaurant, One If By Land, Two If By Sea. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think that has a history. It's got U.S. history in there somewhere. It's somebody, Benedict Arnold or somebody owned that restaurant in the 1700s. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. Seems like a thousand years ago. <laughs> and then you had two years in San Francisco. This is why I'm telling you, he's had a really great life. And you're only, what, 50? Uh, 54. 54. I you're 54. Yes. I'm sorry I forget that. Uh, I should remember. Um so, so far you've gone from Madrid, the graduation trip, of course, to Europe. And then we go two years here to San Francisco where you build a foundation and you love the city, right? I do. I did. It's uh, kind of metamorphosized a little bit into, I'm not, I don't miss it anymore. I miss New York, but I do not miss San Francisco. Um, and uh, loved it. Loved it. And I still love the people there, but uh not as enamored with the city as I used to be. Yeah, well, things are changing. Yep. And it's, it, you know what? I'm realizing I'm not crazy about change. I'm really not. So it's like <laughs> rubs against my soul. It's like, ouch, ouch. Yep. I'm not crazy well, about this. I, uh, 
as I, when I came down, I mean, you know, so we've got New Zealand, we've got Fiji, we've got all that in between. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing all these things you did. I forgot, I really did. But you did your accounting world uh, in the New Zealand cloud accounting. That's where I am now. Yes. Kind okay. of started. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's kind of this, it's kind of like a foundation I've built, built. Um, so kind of going back to the timeline we get straight is, you know, went to Santa Barbara for college, graduated, went on my European tour that everybody does after they graduate from university and proceeded to get drugged and, and, you know, lost everything, including my passport visa, everything, um, everything in the streets of Madrid. Remember. But um, yeah, yeah, you were, I mean, we, we communicated, it was, you know, we didn't, this was in the 90s, so we didn't have, I mean, it was, a, you know, telexes and fax, not even faxes, telexes and phone calls was the only, th- so, um, but, but um, ended up just like focusing, it's like, okay, what needs to be done? Put one foot in front of the other. Don't look at the past. And it's kind of similar to the way I, I speak Spanish. But I never got to the point where I could conjugate verbs in the past tense. Hmm. So whenever I speak Spanish, including when I was in Madrid, uh, I can only speak about the now and the future. I can't conjugate a verb in the past. So let's not talk about the past because I don't know how to conjugate a, a, a verb in Spanish in the past. So I focused on what's going on. I didn't want to say, oh, I got drugged and I lost. No. What do I need to do now? And what am I going to do in the future? And, so and I like really- and I like that a lot, but I don't pick up too many bios that tell me they were drugged in Madrid. Uh, and I remember <laughs> it, okay? And you lost your passport and you learned from it. Okay, yeah. moving yeah. ahead. All right, so, but the thing is, is that, well, I've got to talk about something that happened in the past that is in the now. And, I, can, and- I can conjugate English verbs in the past tense, yes. Okay, so now you have... A beautiful daughter, Ava. How old is she? 15 years old. She just celebrated her quinceanera um, back in November. Yes. Yes. Now, if this is too personal, you don't have to answer. You can say, I'm going to pass. You know, is it raising a, a daughter by yourself and being the father that you are? Seriously, for those that are listening. Uh, uh a lot easier than many would make it out to be. Really, really. Um, and I don't you're know like that's a this, function. You're like this, you know, the two of you are like this. So one thing I've, I've, I tell people, nobody asks, but I'll, I'll tell them from time to time in situations like this, which is one thing, one rule I, I always followed from day one since, since she was old enough to talk is um, I would never use the excuse because I said so. That was, Ah. that's not a reason. And if you use that as a kind of a benchmark to say, okay, if I tell you to do something, or if I suggest you do something, um, or I tell you to do something, um, and they ask, say, why? And it's because you can never, that is a cop out. Okay. So I think that that is a foundation for a very strong relationship because you, you show that you just, it's just a cop-out answer. So you shows that you actually have some reasoning. Behind, the reasoning may be flawed, but you have reasoning and you can, you can justify advice. Um, so I have used that and it is, um, it, it, it's really not terrible. Also, you gotta, you can't take things personally. I am in sales. I have been, I think in my, you know, I, I indicate I started about, um, uh, about 15 years ago and been yeah. selling ever since. And, it, and it, I'm sorry. I said, yeah, I mean, everything you've done is, yeah. So in sales, you, you can't take things personally. Um, you know, a no is, is a, a no is one step closer to the next. Yes. I mean, I don't. So, so in parenting, you cannot take, especially from a teenage job, you can't take things personally. You got to understand that there are, there are a lot of spinning plates going on out there. And uh, I think that's a secret is it's perception. It's, it's your attitude towards parenting. And I love it. It's the awesome, it's the most awesome thing. And I'll do, I, 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 I love being a dad and kind of a mom too, single parent. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah. So we don't need to um, 
talk much about the past, but I don't talk to a lot of single fathers, okay, uh, that are parenting, single parents and fathers. And, yeah. and uh, I like the way you are. And I think the two of you have a bond that's unspeakable. That's what I was doing this for. That was the bond. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I love the fact that your background brings you to the now. And it used to be maybe in the 80s. Who remembers anymore? They used to say, be in the now, be in the now. That was the big thing. So here we are. And I'm grateful for you taking the time today, Russell. Mm -hmm. I mean it. I appreciate it. This Mm -hmm. is Susan Stafford, your child, and with Out of the Box with Russell Kibbe, who I opened with and said, he's not normal. He's not normal because he's my nephew. (laughs) That makes him special. (laughs) We're blood. (laughs) And that's right. (laughs) That's right. Uh, So how are you? This is what this is. This is what happened when I was talking to Russell. But you're going to have to explain it better because, you know, I don't live there in you. And I know you're doing something from Australia to help the mom and dad small businesses in America. Is that correct? Yes, but uh, but they're based they're, they're based in New Zealand, actually. But uh, OK, but my but my manager and many of our team is in Australia, but uh, they're headquartered in, in in Wellington, New Zealand, where I've been, by the way. So. Kind of how, 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 how was that? So how was well, that? When I, I've not when been I at, there. Okay. Uh, when I, when I was at Goldman Sachs and we, you know, when I was in New York, I left with my boss. He had an idea to start an investment bank in, in the South Pacific, in New Zealand. So in 90, in 1997, we went down there and I moved to New Zealand and we started, a, we started a company. And then after six months, we had to move to Fiji and move to Fiji. And so um, in that time, the six months that I was in New Zealand living, starting a business, uh, I also got to visit. And this was in Auckland, which is kind of like it's uh, similar to like Los Angeles is to Auckland as Wellington is to San Francisco. Auckland's the better weather, bigger. Wellington, more like San Francisco, you know, the weather isn't as great, but you know, kind of a different vibe. Went to Wellington, visited Wellington, loved New Zealand, loved the country, amazing place. Of course, this was, you know, in the 90s. I had really good friends down there. Um, Come back, moved to Fiji, come back to LA, get married, have a kid. And then in the early 2010s, uh, cloud accounting, this thing you hear about, you know, started coming about. Yeah. Uh, cloud software, which are applications. And uh, I had been working for a company called Intuit, uh, selling to accountants and CPAs. And uh, there was this competitor to them called Zero X-E-R-O. And uh, they were making a, a play in the US market. So I went to go work for them. And they just so happened to be based in Wellington, New Zealand. No mistake. No mistake. Uh, so I know it well. I've been there, knew all the people, knew, hey. Uh, and that is kind of like how things kind of um, kind of flow. They evolve, you know. So I was in a different world in the 90s. And then I come back in the 2010s and uh, 2013, I guess, more accurate. But uh, and then I'm working. And once you're in this whole cloud world, um, it's 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 fascinating and it's exciting and it's you're always learning and that's one thing i always love to do i ask a lot of questions um i listen a lot and uh try to get try to get what uh people you know my customers what they get their voice the voice of the customer what what do they want what works what doesn't work what are their high points what are the low points and once you kind of take all that in then that allows you to convey that to your team, the, the people, the programmers who are behind, you know, building all this. So once, so once I was able to understand from it, because I used to be an accountant when I first. Oh, yeah, that's why school. I was reading. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So I know, I know what was important to me, but that was many moons ago when I was an accountant. Things have evolved, and uh, and now I, uh, I, I, after some time with. With, uh, with Zero, I moved on to an application that works with, with Zero. So you have this kind of platform and then you have all these apps or these 
other uh, types of tools that work with the software, with, with the, the uh, platform, if you will, and uh, got to travel all over the world. That was, that was tough, though. That was tough having, leaving my daughter behind and going to London or Sydney or where. I mean, it was um, – now, 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 that company, they were based in, 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 uh, in Australia. Oh, were they? Yeah. But you say, so, see, that's, I know, at least, at least you're, I'll be so honest about, I had to leave my daughter behind, but I had to travel everywhere. And there's people that are listening saying, I would just love to go to those places and see them once, you know? I mean, you had an extraordinary, wonderful past. And that brings you to the future where you are right now. And you're working it. I mean, some of the things that you've done, you know, I have forgotten. Really, well, I have forgotten so much. You've worked hard. You really have. A lot have. of these times, I remember um, I was on that trip around the world. So that was back in 91. I took, quit my job and traveled around the world for a year. Took the Trans-Siberian Railroad. But um, I'll never forget this. I was in San Sebastian, Spain, uh, which is right on the border between uh, Spain and France. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there, uh, I, I called in to the family reunion that year and talked to everybody and talked to you. And, you know, back in those days, you know, that was a pretty big deal. You know, 1991 on the, you know, they didn't have technology. <laughs> that was humongous then. It was a big thing, you know. It was, it was. And I had been gone about four or five months by that time mm -hmm. and really felt, uh, and it was good though, because I got to connect with, you know, mom and dad and sister, and then you and the whole family. And that's what is, um, I think, really important is, is family. Um, and, and that really was memorable to me being able to talk, tell you what I'm doing, where I'm going, you know, getting ready to go on a train to, you know, eight days on a train, mm -hmm. <laughs> Trans-Siberian Railroad. Yeah. It's a great railroad. I mean, yeah. um, it's an experience. It's a, oh yeah. Such an experience, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, and, and we get to kind of, through the last 25 years, I think is what it is. I don't know how many years it's been for the reunion since 88 was the first one. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been getting together uh, on an annual basis every summer. Yeah, and I'm proud of us for doing that. We had to slow down this past year because of COVID. We've tried to be respectful to it. Uh, and I think we have been. I think mm -hmm. you and Ava are the only two that have gotten COVID. It's probably when you're traveling. Yes, it was. We were visiting family, uh, and uh, and she caught she caught it from a friend of hers, who was no no more than a cold for for them. And so I don't know what this you know I don't know what the strain was, but everybody's different. I'm healthy, you know. I do thank you Lord. yoga. I've been start. I've been doing that for two years. Um, oh. But yeah, it's, I guess, yeah, I didn't, yes, I've been started, I started yoga, I have a great, uh, great instructor, former Bollywood star, actually, maybe I should get her on an interview, that might be interesting, because she was, what's her big, name, who is that, uh, honey? Uh, her name is Radha Zaidi, or, uh, it's India, from India, yes, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but she lives here, she lives here, so she's a, uh, she's a yoga instructor, and um, fascinating life, big movie star, um, back in the early 70s, um, radio, uh, yeah, but, uh, so being in good health, eating well, being, you know, uh, flexible, stretching, doing yoga, meditating, all this, um, kind of lets you be in a position to, uh, to tackle these, these curveballs that life throws you sometimes, which is, you know, COVID and, and, uh, you know, Ava was, she's 15 years old, so she had nothing more than a sore throat, um, but my taste and my, sorry, my smell came back 10 days, no, two weeks, sorry, two weeks to the day after I, when I caught it. And, um, like I said, hers is still not, she doesn't have, she can't smell anything right now. Well, there are so many different cases depending on your immune system and your attitude, by the way, I want to compliment you on it. You remind me of your mother, which I be my <laughs> sister, uh, Catherine Marie. Uh, but anyway, um, some 
depending on the age, we had a couple of people in the hospital here who uh, went in and got pneumonia. And see, that's, that's, um, that makes it harder to be crawling back. And that's when you promise God anything and everything um, because you're in such a dire need for his help. Uh, but I think to come out of it like you have and be doing what you're doing, but it was your attitude that got me the other day when I call, because you can tell so much by people who are on the phone. Uh, that's why I like the phone, because I can hear the depression or the attitude, like your attitude was great. You cheered me up, but that's what you and your mother do. It's kind of, um, you're, you're encouragers. You both are. Mm-hmm. Well, that is, uh, that comes in handy when, especially in my career, well, last 15 years anyway, of sales is, uh, is it, it, it comes where you tend to be pretty, you have to be positive when it comes to sales because you're going to get a lot more rejections than you're going to get affirmations or, you know, mm-hmm. positive outcomes. And uh, like I said, every no is one step closer to a yes. And I don't take it personally. And that applies to both business and life. Jeez, I wish. See, I'm learning. I'm still. You see, you can teach me so much because I'm still learning. I I I take things personally, and I I'd like to change that. You know, I really would. I can't tell mm. if the heart's too sensitive, or do I think it's really about me? Because it's not. Mm. Not about mm-hmm. me. It's not about well, you. It's really not. Yeah. Um, you know, in these numerous job transitions I've had. Uh, especially as it relates to the cloud, the cloud accounting world, um, they've been layoffs, you know, and there've been, you know, people who are, you know, directly responsible for me not having a job. Um, and I have friends and I have people of mine who are more, much more spiritual than I am and more wise, I think in many ways than I am. And, and, uh, you look at it and it's like these, these, these times when I'm, you know, when you were laid off or you, you know, you, you, of course you take it personally because it's something you know, it's, but, but when you think about it, it's like, it's just an opportunity to do something better, to do something great. And I was in, uh, I met the person who was responsible for me being um, uh, let go. I was in London and it was just amazing because it was this amazing party, this amazing responsibility, this amazing job that I had as a result of being, you know, being laid off, uh, at my prior position and everyone's like, Oh, did you, you know, did you get, you know, cause you met this. And I was like, did you give him a stink eye? Did you it's like, no, I, I thanked him. I thanked him for giving me the opportunity to then, you know, do something else and do something great. And that's kind of how you have to look at these things. Um, it's like on grandmother's kitchen door, you know, how we used to put everything on the kitchen. And in fact, I've still got everything on the kitchen uh, doors, but uh, you make, Lemonade out of lemons is not how it goes. That's right. One door shuts, the other door opens. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. how it goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe in that. I really do believe in that. Oh, yeah. That's the only way that's going to get you through because, you know, a lot of times, you know, going through uh, some things can be trying, I guess, shall we say. And some people would say, why don't you just, you know, crop into a ball? And I'm like, that's not going to, sometimes you feel that way, but that's not, that's not really going to, it's not going to help. And the other thing, you know, about parenting is you need to be, um, you need to, you need to parent by example and you can't just, Mm -hmm. you can't just say and do it. Obviously, you know, because I said, so that doesn't work. Um, But also you, you can't be, you can't have it both ways, you know, don't be, you know, eating, don't badmouth someone for eating chocolate cake for breakfast as I'm scooping chocolate cake into my mouth for breakfast, right? Right. right. You need to lead by example. And that's not only parenting, uh, you know, in, in, in your work environment, it's like, if you can, if you can be an example, um, you'll get respect and that's really what you need. But you had a good role model in all due respect. You had Gary Kibbe, that's your father, mm-hmm. my brother-in-law, and he was a role model for you. Yeah. Look how many yeah. years he worked. I was at Boeing. McDonald Douglas. But and McDonald, the, okay. The yeah, and then Bowling Bottom back in yeah. 90. In fact, the funny story about that, yeah. when I was, so he had been worked at McDonald Douglas since I was born. And uh, 
we didn't really talk a lot. I lived in, I lived in New York and I was on the trading floor of Goldman Sachs, you know, hundreds of phone lines and, uh, you know, hundreds of people on trading desks they are low slung. And so everybody can see each other. And dad and I didn't talk a whole lot. Um, but I got a phone call on the trading desk said, you know, Russell, your dad's on line 72. And I see it beeping him. It's like, I've never had a phone call from, you know, from him, let alone at work. I mean, it was always, you know, after work, I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, something, something's gotta be terribly wrong. Wrong. Yeah. I punch 72, I get up and he's like, hi dad. And he's like, yeah, you're, uh, we just found out that Boeing is buying us and I'm wondering what I should do with all my McDonnell Douglas stock. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all i did a big and then and then i'm like well let me see what our analysts have to say hold on to it don't sell it so yeah that was that was a uh, funny that was a, the funny, funny. About, the, about the purchase 90 95 96 somewhere in there so yeah uh, wow great great role model yeah and, yeah yeah it, definitely and great but let's let's go back to the beginning um, talk about role models and looking positive on the positive side of things. Um, you know, great, great childhood, wonderful, everything perfect. And then something happened when I was uh, 12 years old. That disease, I almost died, right? In the hospital, Children's Hospital, Los Angeles. That's and right. in comes Aunt Susan walking through there. <laughs> um, uh, and and uh, mom never left my side. She moved in. And never left my side for eight days, I think. That's Catherine. Uh, yeah. in the hospital. Yeah. But uh, uh, the great thing is, is that, you know, everybody who came to visit me, yourself included, they never said, oh, it's too bad that you have this terrible disease that, you know, that it's like, how you doing? Being happy, being positive. And, and even I got, uh, and I don't know if you remember, we got to, we got to go and have, they let me go for, um, for an hour and a half an to hour. go to, yeah. the, to the restaurant down the street from Children's Hospital. Right, right. Yeah. I and, do remember. Just, yeah. And it's like, hey, it's normal. It's like, this is a little bit of normalcy, right? I get to go outside the hospital for an hour and a half and have a, and have a dinner at a restaurant. And, you know, now out here, uh, speaking of normalcy, you know, Ava uh, and her friend and I, we um we went to the Huntington Gardens, uh yes, the Huntington Library uh here in San Marino. Um and then it's we went beautiful. It's really amazing. I've and, gone uh, through it twice. Oh, Pinky and Blue Boy are there. Anyway, <laughs> um I have a lot of succulents. That's what I'm that's why I, I love the succulents. I'm a cactus and succulent guy. But afterwards, they just opened up restaurants here in LA County to um mm. Uh, to have to eat outside, and we ate outside for the first time. Thank you, oh. thank you, God, thank you. And we sat oh. out, and it was just so wonderful. It was just pleasant outside. It was a little, you know, it was like six six o'clock, but they had yeah. And it was just like this is what a little bit of normalcy in our life is just a good thing. Um, yeah. Even her soccer club, you know, she's a she's a a highly skilled athlete. And um, she got out to play her first soccer match a week ago, all COVID rules and everything, but um, just a little bit of normalcy for these kids. Yeah. Uh, it's fantastic. And well, me too. Well, it's, it's good for all of us. And, and, there's, and there's a part of me that's saying it's not just uh, the normal way of what we used to do, but the appreciation we have from what we used to do that we didn't necessarily appreciate then. I mean, I, you know, we're appreciating a lot more, uh, here in America, you know, a lot more. I think mm -hmm. that's I think that's the truth. By the way, Lisa Marie, your sister will probably be seeing this, and her husband Dennis. So, uh, are they both retired? Yes. Yes. Now, what? They, explain to my my people, your people, our people. We're here. Uh, what did she do exactly? She had a title. I know she knew so much about medicine, but tell me. Tell she us. was she was a salesperson just like me, but yeah, sure. She, she was a lot more technical. Her stuff. She talks to scientists. I talk to accountants. She talks to scientists and PhDs and 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 uh, people in the labs. She was kind of she was she was more of my dad's brain, and I got more of my mom's side in terms yeah. of science. Well, I never made it through calculus. I think she took she took calculus in high school. I never got even through 
any calculus. Yeah. Well, everybody has different gifts. There's supposed to be nine of them, nine gifts to each person. And so um, I don't know what other beliefs are, but I believe in what I believe. And there are nine different gifts. And so you've been given quite a few. And well, our, our family has two, by the way. We're, we're lucky. And one thing I always like to say when I'm, when I'm talking to people is, is everybody is an expert in something. Mm-hmm. And every, the, yes, they have gifts, but there is just depends on the subject matter. They could be an absolute expert in it. And mm-hmm. uh, that this is why this is why I love what I do is I get to I get to talk to experts every day. I've had three today already. You said something earlier um, that that got my attention. You said you like to learn every day. You said that at the time of the show. And I had heard this morning I was listening to um, a particular person on the radio who was talking about when you learn every day. You live life more every day. And I think that's the truth. I think that's yeah. really the truth. Because you keep on looking forward. I can remember, this just sounds awful. This is a confession right here on, by the way, you're joining Susan Stafford. Thanks for being here on Out of the Box with Russell Kippy. And I used to think, I used to think that I knew it all. Do you believe I thought that? Mm. I you couldn't teach me. I knew it all. I really thought I knew it all. Isn't that awful? Terrible confession. Sorry, I had to tell you. I had to tell me. I'm getting right. I'm out of that. But boy, I can't believe anybody could be stuck there. It's learning that makes it fun. Learning that makes it fun. That's what you're doing. Yep. Once once you stop, and that's why you know with this job, you it's it's the same kind of platform but you're always learning new things. I've learned more about accounting in the last, I've been in this job for about four and a half months, learned a lot more about accounting than I ever knew because I'm talking, I'm I'm working in accounting software. What we do, it's called spotlight reporting, but what we do is we we, we pull financial data from things like QuickBooks and Xero and make financial reports, just like the big boys, you know, like the big companies get. So you're small, like small, medium size, you know, mom and pop company. and we allow you to get data and present it in a way that makes sense to a non-accountant person, graphs and things like that. So um, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty, powerful, pretty powerful stuff. And it's exciting because I do what's called consolidation, which is really in the weeds. But imagine if you had three companies, you, 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 built, you bring them all together. And I, I say people days and days and days of work just suffice to say that people can't run their business without my software because i i make their lives so easy by allowing these three four seven fifteen i had a company 13 separate companies and we roll them all together into one giant one well one large company and they would spend 10 working days two weeks to generate these reports, which they can do now in about an afternoon or a morning, about four hours. Now, I know I'm supposed to say, wow, that's really something, but this is what I'm going to say. I don't think I could ever do that. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, could I, never, I could never, I could never be a, a TV star. I could never be, a, I, could, I couldn't be a celebrity. I think it'd be too much attention on me. <laughs> So would, we all would, do, we all have our specialties. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Trust me, I don't know. Uh, okay, so there's a lot of things I could never do. I could never do calculus. My sister really? did it in high school. My niece Annalise, she did it in high school. I I never no. I never could do it. So every but that's why there's 31 flavors of ice cream. We can all do. We can that's all do true. what we're good at. That's true. I, I wasn't happy being an accountant behind a desk, not talking to people. I was unhappy. Oh, no, you're definitely a people person. I have you're to. like your mother, you know. I, I mean, I, I think, uh, I'm sorry, I stepped on you. What'd you say, please? What'd you say? Just, I, I have to have this, I have to have this interaction because uh, it's, just, it's just who I am. And everybody's, you know, you can call an extrovert. I don't know, I wouldn't, I, I don't go around the world talking to every Tom, Dick and Harry walking down the street, but uh just you know, tom and harry 
just Tom just and Harry. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and, and uh, so, yeah, when you can't, you know, everybody, everybody's good at some, everybody brings something to the table. Some, yeah. some, you're always, somebody's good at something, you know? I guess, I guess I'm just at a point where so everything is so technical. I can be sitting in a room with three people and those two will be texting each other and they're in the same room. And I just, I just, it's, I just think that's overboard, but that's because I think it's overboard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we see the world through the gla- our own glasses. Yeah, right. And and uh, I, of which. Mm-hmm. and and uh, uh, teenage daughter, I have to see things through. Sometimes see things from her perspective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It helps me understand um, because I could just sit and say, "Oh, kids nowadays," and just throw. No, I am active. I am involved, and I am um, aware. And I, and I definitely, that's, you know, one of the tricks too, is you need, there, there's like being involved, but then there's a smothering point too. So it's a fine line. And I'm, I'm, I'm lucky because we do have a very good you know, relationship where she can tell me, um, you know, what's bothering her or, or not. I know I've learned stay away. Sometimes it's the best time is just to go and um, go for, take the dogs for a walk or do something. You want to repeat what you just said about timing? Well, just timing. that part about timing. Just sometimes it's good just to walk away and take be and disappear for a little bit. Go make yourself busy, and let uh, time just kind of cure. You know, when my doctor, when I when I I, uh, I communicate with my doctor when I when I came back positive for COVID, and I said, <laughs> "Doctor, you know, here are the symptoms. Here's what's going on." And it was a very succinct answer was just said, and I just said, do you have any medicine? I'm thinking of all this, all these different medicines that people took. And he just sent back her time is the best medicine. That I like that. Diagnosis. I like that. That's, and that's, true. and it's true. It is true. Uh, so, I, I'm, I don't want to say I'm anxious, but there's a couple of things I'd like to know before I, I mean, everybody has an appointment with death eventually, uh, mm-hmm. but before I go on, I'd like to know one who killed JFK, my president. I'm still waiting for the real answer on that. That was okay. my first vote. And that was my biggest shock for me. You know, somebody mm-hmm. else would have said back then, Abraham Lincoln, you know, you know, oh, mm-hmm. J- JFK was mine. And, uh, and, Second, what is COVID? <laughs> how do you get it? <laughs> and how do you know someone's a carrier? And how do you know? I mean, I'd like to know that before I go on, you know? Uh, I mean, we don't know much. I, well, yeah. I, you know, just having, um, I, I'm on the board of, of, of Ava's uh, soccer club. Mm-hmm. And one of the other board members whose daughter also plays on the team, his, his daughter brought it back and gave it to him too. So, um, both of us, you know, but she gave it to the whole family, the mom, the sister, the brother, all of them got it. Luckily, it's just two of us living in our home here. So it was just, luckily the two dogs can't get it. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for them. I, I didn't know if animals could get COVID and I'm going to have a veterinarian on, uh, oh. next week and okay. talk, talk to him about that. And then you said something else that was interesting to me. Oh, I read where they're going to replace manpower with robots. They're doing it at the big companies uh, uh, and for truck like, drivers, and they're going to put in robots. Well, if that's the case, we're going to have less and less jobs, huh? If that's the case. Well, self-driving cars. People are going. All those, all those taxi drivers and truck drivers are going to have to adapt. Yeah. I mean, you can't. We can't be luddites, and we can't let just push technology down to keep our jobs. Yeah. People are Same. going to need to. This. I, I know it's hard. I've been adapting since. Well, I've, I've adapted career-wise pretty much constantly. Yes. Um, I, I was trying to say that norm um, at the top. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's easy for me to, to do, to say, but, but um, it really, people need to just kind of be thinking, 
again, we're experts at something. Truck drivers are really good at something and yeah. they might need to kind of reinvent themselves. Yeah, your, your, you, your attitude is great. That's what you've been saying for the last 17 minutes, basically. <laughs> it's, 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 how, it's how we look at this and how we take it. But I mean, I was surprised because I never thought I'd see in my age even a robot replace a man. I just never thought I'd see it. That's all. I think technology is wonderful in a lot of ways. That's why we got into the moon. We went to the moon. Yes. Hello. Thank you. Um, but I, I guess a lot of it's because I'm scared of technology because I know so little about it. You know, really. that's yeah. When, when you fear, when you, when you don't understand something, it is, it is fearful. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think, I think it's, it's something that we need to kind of, Focus on and like the like Ava's generation, like they are perfect for adapting mm -hmm. because they've grown up with the iPhone generation, right? The iPad, the right. iPhone, and everything. I mean, and so <laughs> we had the hula hoop. I mean, look yeah. at the difference. <laughs> there, yeah. and there, there is hope uh, for for the next generation. I think. I think because they're going to be used. You know, they. You know, they've. Yes, she starts high school and she has to, well, she has to start high school from her, you know, from her house here, you know, doing remote learning. But you know what? You know, we had to do a graduation. We drove, we drove our car past from middle school. Okay, you know what? You just, you just, and instead of sitting and focusing on the negatives, you know, she's like, I can sleep in later. I don't need to do all my make. Oh, so, oh, and here's another one. When she goes back to school, whenever that is, um, she's excited because she's she's only going to have to do her makeup from here on up. Because I guess the mask you don't have to do your makeup or wear this this um, BB cream or something. I, I see. I know a little bit about cosmetics because I buy them and mm -hmm. but yeah. But she's not going to have to do her uh, under her mask. So hey, look on the bright side. Like COVID, yeah, it stinks. I have to wear a mask to school, but the good thing is I don't have to do my all my makeup. <laughs> Well, that's the fun way to look at it. Uh, I guess we got to put you on more often because I hear so many people saying, my daughter's not or my son's not. So it's nice to hear this, which is. Oh, it's, it's not. a. I mean, it's not a bed of roses by any stretch. No, but, but you're making it. You're making it better with your attitude. I'm making it. Yes. Yeah. Expectation and, and, and attitude. Mm -hmm. And, you know, frankly, uh, our first, talking about school, our first, the first time we had school shooting was in Columbine. And mm -hmm. I went there uh, as a chaplain. I'm a chaplain. And uh, I, I never thought we'd ever see anything like that again. I don't know what year that was, but it was the first. And my point uh, being, look how many we've had since and how we approach it and what have we changed in the interim. Um, that was just, I mean, so I guess, you know, whether your kids are at home learning or at school, I guess the most important thing is that you're, we're together, that you're together, that you know she's coming home, you know. We've lost somebody. So I think that's the aspect of safety that I'm, I'm thinking is pretty positive. So what's the rest of your day like? Because we're closing up here. What closing are you going to do now? Mm -hmm. I have an appointment. I'm going to be showing a small business uh, in about 15 minutes, showing him how they can uh, take a couple of their uh, holdings and can do consolidation. The beautiful thing. Okay. Businesses are like snowflakes. They're all different. So you, you, you learn and you show them and you give, you teach people. I'm a teacher. I'm not a salesperson. I'm an, I teach people. And once they see the better way of doing something, they're going to use their, they're going to, they're going to buy it. So I get to, sh I get to sh show them how it's, how they can, you know, get more time out of their day and be, be spending their time on, other, on, on, you know, bet something other than copying and pasting out of Excel spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, so I get to show people how to do it and uh, I love making their lives easier you know it's like oh I can now go and I can spend more time with my family or this or that you know and yeah so I, I really uh, I get to show them that so uh, top of the hour I'll be doing that um, and then uh, 
we have our soccer training, all COVID, COVID uh, soccer training this after this evening at six o'clock. So uh, I'll take her to that. And I, I'm the, I'm the team manager. So I get to, to do the uh, thermometer and check everybody in. Good. And, uh, they call me the team mom, but it's, it's really <laughs> the team manager. Well, <laughs> uh, and so uh, got that. And then, um, and then we got Friday. Well, and that's where we used to say, thank God it's Friday, DGIF, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Thanks for taking the time for, for, for this show out of the box. I wish for you everything you wish and desire for yourself, Russell. All right. Well, really, thanks, yeah, Susan. Thanks a it was bunch. Great. Thanks for, for having me. And uh, yeah, and, and thanks for tomorrow. talking about your life and what you're doing. <laughs> and maybe you'll of give course. us an update next year, you know, on what you're doing. Okay. okay? All right. Just call. Okay, just call okay. me. Love just you. Just call me. All right. Love you, Susan. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.